Welcome to Stupid Money. Not that money is stupid. Most of us would love to have more of it, but sometimes we make stupid decisions with it. You don't have to. This is the show that unpacks how to stop making stupid decisions so you can be smarter with your money and have a happier, fulfilled life. Join us today as we take a look at Real Estate Seller's Guide. Thank you for joining us. I'm Diana, and I'm here with John and Vivian. And Vivian, what if you had a stupid, crazy thing we do with our money for me? Well, uh, we don't plan for Christmas. We don't plan it by not adding it to the budget. Ooh, so, so we, we don't think ahead, and then we are out of money at the end of the year. We yes. have to go on credit. Yes. Start off a year wrong. Just so remember, credit cards. remember in the budget to add grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad. What about Diana, you? Yeah, Vivian, I thought so. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> Some extra Christmas gifts. John, what about you? What's your crazy for today? Uh, not giving routine car maintenance. Ooh, mm. that will get me in trouble fast. It can cause some damage to the engine. New car coming up, though. Oh, wait, that goes in the budget, too. <laughs> so our episode today is on real estate from a seller's perspective. And I know that if I was selling a house, I would want as much money as possible. I as want as much as money as possible as well, but you've got to be careful not to be greedy because mm. that, that sometimes hinders the sale of a house. Mm -hmm. Hinders it. So hold that thought. Before we go there, let's take it to the streets and discover what people had to say on selling a house. What three things do you need to fix in your house if you were going to sell it? In my house right now, I probably would need to paint some of the areas. Um, what else? Perhaps replace um, some of the kitchen appliances and maybe redo one bathroom. But other than that, it's in superb shape. If you could do a renovation, that would be good. Uh, I know it's, it's, it's a little bit expensive, but I would say the first thing would be the kitchen. Um, uh, second of all, if you have a uh, a basement apartment, you can take care of that as well. And um, probably your driveway, if you could take care of your driveway, or if you can paint, do some painting, that will be good as well. I would say clean up everything that is not necessary in my house. And I would change the color to be like a neutral color. And also i probably gonna um, redo my garden, something like that. My house was built in 1895. So there's always an issue, okay? Right now, I would replace the roof. Okay, I would centralize my electrical system because it's all over the place. And third, if I could, I'd put in HVAC. We'd fix the kitchen, replace the carpet, and uh, fix or replace the front door. I think number one's gotta be curb appeal. You know, anything on the exterior that the person's gonna see right away, make it look nice. Landscaping, if your siding's messed up, needs to be washed, whatever, take care of that stuff right away. Uh, number two, I think kitchen's a big selling point, so if your kitchen needs some upgrades, I'd probably spend some money there first. And then number three would be anything, anything major structurally or water issues, anything that would like just completely turn a buyer off and not want them to deal with it, I'd, I'd take care of that. Hey, I really like that. You know, those people really, I think they watch a lot of home improvement shows they because have, they knew exactly what to say. They knew what to say. My takeaway was they know what to do, but whether or not they do it uh, was another thing. Mm, good point, just yeah. like the rest of us. Yeah. Now, John, back to an earlier point you made. What about greed? Well, if you're greedy, that means you may set the price too high. But let me give you a couple of foundational texts from the Bible. Proverbs 28, 25 says, The greedy stir up conflict, but those who trust in the Lord will prosper. Let's forget the greed for a moment. There's another text, Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own insight. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're getting ready to sell a house, there's no text in the Bible that I can find that really helps me figure this out. But I have a relationship with the Lord. So I'm going to talk to him and say, is this the price? Is it time to sell? And he will talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I want to trust in the Lord's voice. 
along with the counsel of my wife and a few trusted friends that know what to do with this, this type. It's a major event. But the important thing to avoid that greed is bring God into this event. So consult with God. Consult with God. Even on selling a house. Even on selling a so house. So once I've consulted with God, do I go straight to a realtor or do I take it on myself? You can um, take on a realtor or you can do it yourself. A realtor is going to um, charge your commission. If you do it yourself, you're going to have a lot of headaches and you're going to maybe not even sell it. And if you decide to sell it yourself, you need to have a lawyer to help you with the closing. So must have. You must have a lawyer, mm -hmm. yes. John, tell me about your story, because I know that you probably have several houses that you've bought. Matter of fact, sold how many have you bought and sold? Oh, probably seven or eight. Oh, yes. I have too many stories. <laughs> Give us one. <laughs> Always learning the hard way. Uh, again, you know, I fell in love with a motorcycle. I fell in love with a Corvette. I fell in love with a house. So here it goes. Okay. I bought this house, three acres, a pond a horse barn, oh, wow. a dozen or so fruit trees. I'd cut grass at 11 o'clock at night thinking, this is really living. That'd about kill me. I actually remodeled that house. I recited it. Now, back when I was doing this, I could pick up a four by eight sheet of siding by myself, hold it up about two feet off the ground, in place and take a hammer and a nail and nail it. I didn't even have a power gun. Samson. <laughs> I mean, I felt like a Greek god, but now I feel like just a Buddha. Oh, but, uh, so I recited that and I worked hard and uh, then I was transferred. I, I had a lot of money in it. So I decided to sell by owner. Whenever you're in the country, there's a smaller pool of people interested in something like that. So nobody bought. And I, oh, what am I going to do? I found a company that would put a person in that house, let them live there for free so they could show it. That didn't turn out very well. So I finally gave it a, to a realtor. And I didn't do so well financially on that house. And my final point that I realized, if I'm ever in a hole financially, what can I do? And I decided I'm going to stop digging. <laughs> Good point. Lick my wounds and move on. Well, I have some questions for you to see if okay. you actually did everything possible to sell that house. I thought I did. Okay. Did you um, clean up the outside? Yes. Okay. Did you cut down the overgrown shrubs? Yes. And you picked up all the toys out of the yes. yard? Yes. Did you put a nice, beautiful welcome mat on the front? Yes. You did all of that? Built a front porch, cleaned the garage, did put you? gutters on it. I'm Anything you can think of, you I did. You did it. You cleaned the garage. I did. You cleaned the garage I also? I did. Wow. Sound I like even you did put everything. dirt in the garden. Okay, well, one last thing. You know, you have to have neutral colors on homes. What color did you paint that house? Do I have to tell you? Uh-oh. Yeah. Lime green. Oh, that's it. There you go. <laughs> that's why the house never sold. <laughs> I drove back by that house a couple of years later and they had painted it beige. I don't want it. <laughs> you want your lime green. So Vivian, should we buy, excuse me, should we sell or lease? It depends, Diana, because if you lease a home, you have to make sure you're going to get back your money that you're putting into it. It's, you know, you want to at least take care of your mortgage, but you want to make a profit also. So it just depends. These are all amazing tips. Thank you so much. And there's going to be more, so stay tuned right after this break. Hello, I'm Danilo. And I'm Victor. In today's Money Hack, we're looking at ways to save money by backing up computer data like documents and photos to the cloud. There's money to be saved with the cloud. Seems like everyone is talking about the cloud, but it's sometimes hard to know where to start. First, what is the cloud? Well, the cloud is a network of servers that stores your data remotely. Okay, got it. But it seems people are often uncertain about putting their data on the cloud. Why is that? That's partly because cloud storage has undergone rapid changes over the past few years. And will likely continue to change? Of course. It's important to pay attention to updates to cloud service policies. So how can the cloud save people money? Well, for starters, it could help you avoid losing valuable data. 
all hard drives eventually fail. Many people have ended up taking their failed drives to a data recovery service to retrieve data that just wasn't backed up. Never fun. So how much does that kind of data recovery cost? It can range between $400 to $2,000. In most cases, it's around $1,500. But can't you just back up to an external drive? Yes, but beware. First, a lot of people fail to back up regularly. That means when their external drive fails, they lose most of their recent data. Also, too many people save to an external drive and then delete that data from their personal computer. That means it's only on one drive, which is a big no-no. What about privacy with the cloud? Some people don't want to put their personal data on cloud services. Cloud service safeguards are considered very secure, but it's still not something some people are comfortable with, and that's okay. But for most people, the encryption used by cloud service companies is enough to give them confidence. Good to hear. Are there any other people out there who just aren't a good fit for the cloud? If you live in an area with really slow internet, then storing large amounts of data in the cloud is a bad idea because uploads and downloads will be slow. You don't want to waste your life staring at a progress bar. Exactly. But do cloud services cost money? Some do, especially if you have a lot of data to store. But you can now get a decent amount of storage space for free. Can you give us some examples? Sure. Google Drive, Dropbox, and iCloud are some of the big ones. Google Drive gives you 15 gigabytes, iCloud gives you 5 gigabytes, and Dropbox gives you 2. All for free. That's enough space to at least back up some of your most important and frequently used documents and photos. And that would sync automatically with my computer. Yes. Once you set it up, as you modify your documents, so will the backups in the cloud. That's slick. Yes, and it saves money. It could save a priceless photo or a $1,500 trip to the closest data recovery facility. That's serious though, serious. Thanks for sharing, Victor, and thank you all for joining us on today's Money Hack. Thinking about selling your home? Well, you wanna check in with Dave and his friend, Clyde the Talking Dodo Bird. In this next segment of Stewardship for Dummies, they will give some great advice on how to prepare your home before putting it on the market. Let's check in with him right now. This is my friend Clyde, a dodo bird. Do, 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 do. Did you know that dodo birds are extinct? Stink! I do not stink. No, Clyde, I didn't say stink. I said extinct. It means well, there, there are no more. Yes, there is. You leave Pastor John out of this. Well, you asked. You know, Clyde, I heard last week that you're trying to sell your house. Is that true? Yeah, but I'm not sure how to go about doing it. You got any suggestions? Well, let me ask you some questions. Far away. First, do you want to sell it yourself or do you want to use a real estate office? Oh, I already, already have a real estate agent. It's called Fly Day Night. Well, is that a reliable company? Oh, sure. I bought the first tree house in them. Then why did you move? Woodpecker moved in next door. Have you ever lived by a woodpecker? Can't say I have. Well, don't. They make a lot of noise and they eat. And they break one of the five rules of a tree house. What's that? They make too many hoes. Oh. So now you live in a different tree house. So tell me, how long have you lived there? Two long years. Well, that's not very long. Oh, and Dodo's last stand, that's four years. Oh, so birds live half as long as humans? Well, don't rub it in. Okay, so you live in a tree house. Is it in a, a good, safe neighborhood? Oh, it's in the middle of Sherwood Forest. Sherwood Forest? Oh, you mean Sherwood Forest Park downtown. That's what I said, Sherwood Forest. Okay, that is a nice section of town, but what condition is your treehouse in? Does it need any work? Well, it could use a little work, such as, well, first, the limb it's on is starting to crack. Limb? You live out on a limb? Yeah, and they call me the dodo. Duh, it's a tree house. Well, let me ask you, have you ever thought about moving it to the ground? Have you ever heard of a dodo living on the ground? Yeah, I guess I haven't. You know, David, now that I think of it, I'm not so sure I want to sell my house after all. Well, why is that? Because if I do all the repair work that it needs, it's going to look so gorgeous, I'm not going to want to sell it. Unless you want to buy it right now as is. No thank you. Our guest for today, Ken, comes all the way from New York City 
We so appreciate his energetic style and insight on real estate. Join us when we come back right after this break. Welcome back. I'm John Matthews. This is Stupid Money. I'm always amazed at the things people do with it. We're talking about real estate from a seller's perspective. I want to give you some inside hints on what to do with a house to get it prepared. I'm with Ken Varga. Where are you from, Ken? Hey, John. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. How are you? I'm doing well. Tell me, what type of work do you do? Well, I live in Brooklyn. I work in Brooklyn. I work in Manhattan. And I inspect these new high rises in Brooklyn and Manhattan, Queens, and the five boroughs. So there's a lot of new development going on in New York right now. And uh, oftentimes, developers hire my company, which is called Pro Home, a little plug there, um, to come in and do inspections, new unit inspections. So we look at the very fine details of a unit before it gets to a buyer. So you do inspections, you're looking for details. Uh, I know the definition of inspection, but uh, I want to sell my house. I ask you as a friend to come over to my house, look at my house to help me prepare. What are you going to find as a building inspector? Like you said, having a friend come over to your house and kind of give your house a quick go, you know, a quick overview, but then more importantly, getting into the details of your house, turning on the faucets, looking at cabinets, looking at the walls, looking at the paint, they can give you an assessment of their feelings. You know, they can say, look, you know what, John, you got a lot of holes in your wall here. Why don't you spackle those, sand it, repaint it? Fit and finish is really important to making a first good impression. Okay, what is fit and finish? Well, think about what you see initially, okay? What stands out to you? For example, holes in your wall. Mm -hmm. Say you had paintings on the wall, you've switched locations, you've mm -hmm. these little holes on the wall. Um, you want to cover those up. You want to spackle them, sand it, and repaint it so your walls look clean and smooth. You don't want to see bumps and waves in your, in your wall. Caulking in your bathroom, around your tub, around your sink. You don't want to see old, cracked, or moldy caulking. Caulking is easy to take out, mm -hmm. easy to put back in, and leaves a nice finish. Shower heads. You don't want to see a shower head that's full of crusty calcium or dirty. You can go to Home Depot, pick up an inexpensive shower head, put it on there. It leaves it a really nice finish. looks shiny and new. Give me three things that I need to fix in my house and they've stood out for you in your building inspection, inspection for many years uh, that I probably ought to pay attention to. Well, your kitchen mm -hmm. and your bathrooms mm -hmm. are two critical areas, especially when it comes to leaky faucets, old faucets or anything like that. You want to make sure that there are no water leaks, that all your faucets work very smoothly and are very presentable. That, that's a very, very important one. Your shower, you want to make sure that the showers work. You want to make sure that the shower heads look nice, that there's no buildup, that there's no clogs, that there's no dribble or calcium marks coming down the walls or anything like that. Those are, the, those are two things that really stand out immediately. And of course, your paint. Your, your countertops, uh, mm -hmm. if you have lighting under your countertops, you want to make it, these are simple fixes that mm -hmm. you can, you know, fix fairly quickly yeah. and for presentation purposes. Oh, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen that needed to be fixed? <laughs> well, the other day I was uh, inspecting a, a luxury penthouse and unfortunately not all contractors are, are uh, uh, well, so let's just say some cut corners. So around the door jam of the shower there was there was tiles okay and there was supposed to be two tiles one tile two tile one tiles well what they did is they put one tile around the whole door jam mm -hmm. and then they cut it in half with a grinder mm -hmm. so you saw the grind marks on every other tile it was supposed to be two tiles one tile two tile one tiles but they ground the middle one in half and it, it was just it was really ghetto and this is just one of those contractors trying to get away with a mistake they made and not do it the right way. So you want to pay attention to uh, all the contractor work and make sure that it's done yeah. the right way. What about craftsmanship? Do you see refined craftsmanship or is that a problem? You know, it's funny you ask that because in, you know, a lot of these penthouses are millions of dollars. In fact, I just inspected a penthouse yesterday, more than $10 million. Now, you would think that the fit and finish would be perfect. But surprisingly, 
you find little things that get overlooked. Mm -hmm. uh, Insincorator, a garbage disposal, mm -hmm. doesn't work. It's installed, they forget about it, they're gone. When you go to test it, it doesn't work. It could be a faulty, it could be electric, but these are the details you need to pay, pay attention to. Cabinetry, cabinetry have you know, magnetic stops and so on and so forth and different hardware that help them open or close. Mm -hmm. They malfunction. You would think a contractor would be fit, and you know, his fit and finish would be impeccable, but a lot of times it, it, it's, it's not. It's not always that way. I've it doesn't matter how much you pay. Yeah. You need to look at it closely and make sure that they're doing the job. Yeah, so that's why they hire you to come along and say, okay, fix this, fix this, fix this, fix this. Exactly. You know, I go through the units with a, with a very detailed eye and give the developer an opportunity to fix those before it gets to the buyer. Now, in some of those high rises, you really don't, they don't have attics, do they? They don't have attics. Yeah. Suppose I have a house with an attic uh, and I took you up there, would there be something that would catch your eye or? Well, obviously if you have leak, if you have rotted, a rotted roof, yeah. you know, if you have water spots on your insulation, first off, first off you wanna make sure that you have insulation everywhere in your attic, mm -hmm. okay, in the eaves and fully covered everywhere. You don't want to uh, see missing insulation, number one. Number two, you wanna look for water spots. If mm -hmm. there are any leaks, you wanna investigate those, fix those ASAP, because when you get a home inspector coming through who's doing uh, inspections on the utilities and on the building envelope of the house, mm -hmm. um, he's gonna pick that up. So you wanna preemptively address those issues before it even gets to him. Because a buyer is gonna look for this stuff. Absolutely. Their inspector is gonna look for this Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. And uh, you know, some of the things they're looking for, we need to preempt and fix them. Absolutely, and you're gonna have a better time, a faster time, the whole process is gonna go better if you can preempt these objections. This has been really interesting. I want people to realize they can do some things to make their house look nice when they get ready to sell it. What one thing would you advise me to do? As a building inspector, what one thing can I do to get my house ready to sell? Well, the easiest thing is really addressing your fit and finish. Mm -hmm. You know, colors. If you update your colors, that's gonna go a long ways. Mm -hmm. If you make sure that your kitchen is in proper working condition, meaning your garbage disposal, your dishwasher, your stove. Uh, make sure, obviously, that it's clean, but that it's functioning, there's no leaks. Those are the easiest, the simplest things to address right away. And having a friend come through to kind of give you a critical eye mm -hmm. is uh, a huge benefit to you in addressing those things because, like I said, if you've lived there for 20 or 30 years, you, don't see that. you may not see it. You may not see that screw missing on a hinge. You may not see that broken handle, yeah. you know. Yeah. Ken, thank you for coming by. My pleasure, John. Appreciated the good counsel. This is Stupid Money. Hope you do something good with it. We'll be right back after commercial. Welcome back to Stupid Money. John, I bet you had a lot of fun in that interview. We had lots of fun. And Ken was helping us in New York City when we did On the Street. Oh, Took really? us through the subway. He just knows that city real well. I bet he was perfect for that. It was good. You know, we're going to have to wrap up this episode on selling tips in your home. But Vivian, maybe you had some last takeaway. Just one more. If you're remodeling, make sure you have a licensed contractor on site at all times because that licensed contractor will be able to get your permits to make sure you're staying up to code. Mm, it's very good important. Point. Yes. Good yeah. point. Next house I get, it's going to meet all the codes. Really? And I'm going to have the best contractor because that home is in heaven just mm. waiting for me. And when I get there, how happy I'll be. That house is not for sale. Mm -hmm. So focus on your home in heaven. Mm. That was beautifully said, John. Thank you both for all this information and inspiration. And plan on joining us again for another episode of Stupid Money. <laughs>